If we're going live. It's Friday. It's Friday. We're on the air. We're the, we're on the air. It's Friday. Thank God it's Friday, everybody. What a week. Oh, my goodness. What a week. Uh, welcome. Uh, this is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce. Welcome to the show. Welcome to my 5 o'clock Friday show. It's Friday, April the 6th, 2018. Uh, welcome, everyone. Welcome, all. Uh, what a crazy week this has been. I, I just i uh, am amazed. One week after another after another, it, it just... It just gets more unbelievable. Um, yeah, what a day. Uh, I've been going at it again today. This week, I've been working so hard trying to keep up with all the news that's going on out there. I am all over the story about the Norwegian sun. Uh, I just, I, I keep thinking, wow, that's it. You know, I, I, I know I know everything now. I figured yesterday I knew everything. The day before, I thought I knew everything. I, you know, well, yeah, I know everything about the Norwegian sun. The, the Panama cruise thing. Sure, I know about, no, no, there's more. Uh, then I then I found out that uh, oh you know it's in dry dock and all is well and oh no no there's more uh, because after the dry dock it's going to go on a repositioning cruise back to uh, Port Canaveral well of course it is and uh, they're going to have two thousand paying passengers that 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 trip that itinerary from Seattle to to uh, Port Canaveral after dry dock sold out it's sold out two thousand passengers are booked on that cruise. Um, my my uh, experience with regard to uh, the first cruise after dry dock is uh, majority of the time, like I'm thinking 90%, but, you know, I don't have a statistic that I can prove, but I am certain a very high percentage of cruises that uh, take place after a repositioning cruise uh, has got construction workers on it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> They're going to have workers on it. They're going to have people downstairs in, in below decks. They're going to have band saws. No, not band saws, but you know, saws and the hammers. And uh, they're going to have all the chemicals down there, uh, finishing chemicals like the lacquers and uh, paints and uh, liquid glues and whatever, as they kind of you know tidy up the end of the job. Because in the dry dock, it's kind of messy. And it's kind of loud and noisy, and there's sparks flying from all the welding going on, and the you know all the pounding going on. I mean, it's just crazy. Uh, but on the ship. Once the ship is at sea, you know, things are a little smoother. These workers can kind of get that finishing work done, but they still need to use these god-awful chemicals that just, you know, just can cause irritation upon irritation. I mean, why do these guys wear goggles when they work with this stuff? Why do they have masks on? You know, it's not Halloween, you know. It's for their safety. Otherwise, they, they die in their 30s, you know. As it is, I'm sure a lot of these guys die young from all the years and years of being exposed to all this gunk around them and some of these new chemicals are such nasty things uh you know i just oh i just i just makes me mad and then to find that tourists uh, passengers on these ships uh you know are, are are just wearing their bathing suits that's what i'd be wearing got a bathing suit on and then a, and a bolo shirt or a t-shirt i got a towel over my shoulder got my flip-flops on um i got maybe got my sunglasses to protect my eyes i got my sunglasses on and maybe i had a hat if i'm walking around the, the deck well that's my protection <laughs> I'm trying to protect against the sun. That's what I'm trying to protect because that's what I'm supposed to protect myself against when I'm on a cruise is not getting a sunburn. But uh, these folks here that I'm hearing about are getting all kinds of issues, uh, medical issues, left, right, and center. It is, it just won't stop. And it, I'm just hearing more and more and more. But before I go on with that, just want to welcome all of you to my show today, um, especially my, uh, my regulars, of course, you loyal diehard regulars who are here every day. Love you guys. Uh, I get comments all the time from my regular viewers. Um, my subscriber base is growing um, again. Um, yesterday, I went off the air. Last night, uh, we were playing travel trivia after I talked about the Norwegian Sun a little bit. Went off the air. I think we we're around 1,577 subscribers, and that was already a, you know, a good day. Today, 1,621. 44 more, if my math skills have not abandoned me. Wow, in one that's fantastic. That's one of the best days I've ever had. So thank you all your new subscribers that have joined in. I hope a bunch of you are watching now. Uh, it would be great. Or if you're not watching now, you're watching tonight or tomorrow. And that's okay because this video, this live stream becomes a regular video. And uh, welcome all of you uh, new subscribers. If you have any questions, comments, either during the telecast, just fire away. Let me know what you want me to know. Uh, or if you've got any comments about my videos or my channel in, in general, just, just send me a comment on any one of my videos because I get alerts 
from YouTube telling me, oh, you got a message, you, you got a comment, you got another comment, and I can then check it out and try to get back to you. So 1,621 subscribers. Fantastic. Channel's growing very quickly. Uh, so thank you, newbies. Thank you, oldies. <laughs> Uh, thank you, viewers as a whole. It's fantastic. Um, what else was I going to mention here today? Uh, it is Friday. I'm on today, 5 o'clock as we know. We're on now. I'm on tomorrow, 2 o'clock Eastern time, and I'm taking Sunday off. Darn it, I'm taking Sunday off. I'm so tired. It's not April Fool's this Sunday, so I can take it off. Last Sunday was April Fool's, and I kind of kind of did a video on April the 1st last Sunday that, you know, kind of caught some of you by surprise. And uh you should have known better. It was it was April Fools, but uh, I love telling a good story. What can I say? I have invited people to this channel. Uh, I've been trying to invite as many as I can to this channel from the uh, Facebook site, uh, the Panama Cruise people. Uh, there's like over 900 of them now that are in that site, um, and I'm trying to invite any of them to come on over and talk to us. Uh, I want to hear firsthand uh, through these text messages. You know what's been going on and, and what's happened, what's the latest. <clears throat> and um, they've been very kind to me over there. They've, they've allowed me to, to let them know that I do the live stream and, and I did a video again today uh, and I had very positive comments from them, uh, you know, for that. And so uh, hopefully we'll, I'll have some of them pop in. Uh, we'll kind of see. I'm just people kind of saying hi to me right now. Those of you who don't know, if you're new to this channel, what happens is I say hi to everybody. I, I interact with my viewers all the time on this live stream. And if you tell me uh, what town are you in, just type in, where are you? What's your high temperature today? Uh, uh, usually we compare notes. I'm in Creston, British Columbia, uh, three miles north of the U.S. border. Idaho is just down here. Uh, I can see it up my window today, actually, because we are a bit cloudy, but it's not that cloudy. So I can see America. America looks great today. Uh, and uh, about 70% of my viewers are from the United States. So welcome, one and all. A uh, bunch of Canadian viewers. I have United Kingdom viewers, Australian viewers, all kinds of. And this channel is an open forum. You can ask me anything you want about going on a cruise, cruise ships, cruise lines, the news of the day. Uh, if I can answer it, I will. If I can't, uh, it might be that one of my uh, regulars over here might have the answer because a bunch of folks here who love the cruise. We all love cruising. Uh, and if uh, none of us can, well, we'll, we'll figure it out by tomorrow's show. <laughs> we'll, have, we'll do some Googling and <laughs> some research. <laughs> Call some favors and we'll figure out an answer. Anyway, so welcome one and all. And if you sign in, say hi, and the gang will probably say hi right back at you. So uh, fantastic. I want to also thank everybody in advance. I know I always get thumbs ups from you guys during the telecast. Some of you people kind of let others know, hey, give Bruce thumbs up. Thank you for all those as well. Every time I get a thumbs up, it just helps with the uh, engagement of the, the, the video and it tells the YouTube computers, hey, Push that video out there because uh, people are engaging with the creator and vice versa. So thank you again for that. Any comments you give me also help, and uh, I appreciate everything. Uh, one last thing, a uh, number of people, num number of my viewers, subscribers, and also my new friends on Facebook, they've been sharing my videos uh, out there, and I really appreciate that. Uh, that really helps expose the story uh, and, and, and en enhances the exposure of this channel. Uh, the key for YouTube is if YouTube, YouTube can measure this stuff. YouTube measures where viewers are coming from when they watch my videos. Uh, and if they start measuring the fact that, oh, man, he, this guy's getting views from all kinds of different YouTubers out there or Facebookers out there and, and Twitterers out there, the computers in the YouTube central, they just start to promote my videos higher up on the search engines, which allows me to expose this story that I want to expose even more and of course it doesn't hurt my channel as a whole uh, those of you who are new i have over 200 videos out uh, a whole bunch of playlists on how to get a cruise how to take a cruise how to save money on a cruise how, what to pack um, how to find a good deal on a cruise i love talking about cruise ship vacations uh, so if you have the time uh, explore my channel and see for yourself and if you like what you see there's a subscribe button there there's a subscribe button there and if you click on that uh, you'll become a, a free subscriber of my channel. And there's another button right beside, I think it's this one. I keep forgetting because I'm black backwards to you guys. But there's a, a bell notification icon, a little symbol, looks like a bell beside the subscribe button. Hit that and uh, you'll be automatically notified every time I post a new video or I'm going live. So anything going on with this channel, you get an email, no charge to you. 
and you can figure out what Bruce is up to now. What's he doing now? And uh, you can check in at your convenience uh, because you've been notified he's up to something and we'll go from there. I'm going to say hi to everybody here and let's get on with the show and talk about uh, Cruise World as a whole and this story. The first person to sign in today was Peter Heckema at uh, 4.06, <laughs> 54 minutes before I went on the air. He's already saying hi. He knows the routine. Hi, Bruce. Just got back from the beach. You know, Peter's, he's roughing it. This guy's, he's really putting out the effort. I, I pity him. Uh, I was 84 in Tarpon Springs today. I think that's just out of uh, Tampa. Uh, just beautiful weather. Lots of tourists enjoying the sun and surf. I did put a link on my Facebook concerning your Norwegian Cruise Line video. Thank you very much, Peter. That is fantastic. Jim Thomas is saying 54 here in Anderson, California, with a steady rain. Eh, the rain, yeah, but you kind of need it though, don't you? I think you do. And then he follows up that comment with a $2 uh, super chat. He's, he's sending me a little, that little bar there. He sent me a couple of bucks on, into my little tip jar there through super chat. And he, call, he says here, building up for the next Costco run. For those of you who don't know, uh, my nearest Costco, my wife and I, by the way, my wife, you'll never get to see her. Uh, she looks like Jennifer Aniston, and we refer to her as Jen, all my viewers, uh, the invisible Jen. Anyway, Jen and I love going to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, because that's our nearest Costco from Creston. It's two hours, 20 minutes down the highway. And every time we get down there, she grabs a hot dog because they're a buck 50. What, how can you beat that? And I love the chicken bake. Uh, it's just so darn tasty. Oh, it's such a deal. So it's a great outing for us. Two hours down, do a little shopping, two hours back. Nice day. Uh, so, Jim, thank you for the $2 contribution. That's that's going into the hot dog fund. And uh, <laughs> any overage will just go to the, you know, we'll go to gas, and then we'll go to, you know, all the food they have, of course. Pamela Jordan is here. Hi, Bruce, and everyone. Mostly cloudy and 69 Fahrenheit here in Iva, South Carolina. Thanks, Pamela, for joining me again today. Welcome back. Silo is here. Hey, gang. 66 for the high, 51 for the low. Partly, but mostly sunny here in Seattle, Washington. Uh, Kent, actually, he says. Uh, do I dare say 204 days to the bliss? Hello, Bruce. <laughs> we got a we got a cruiser going on the bliss in 204 days. Can't wait. Tommy Eaton, 80 in uh, sunny in Jacksonville, Florida. Giving the thumbs ups and yeah, 80. Wow, you love this. Randy Lucas is talking to me here. Greetings from Crooner's Bar aboard the princess regal he's on the princess regal folks in the caribbean right now and he's teasing me every day this week i love it a lovely sea day with a high of 81 degrees we're just north of the island of uh, dr haiti just north of haiti another sea day then back to fort lauderdale to start all over because he is on a back to back and to back cruise i think he's on three isn't he uh, so he's doing one week then another week and then he's doing a repo across the atlantic something like that oh man he's just living it up and uh telling us how it's going unbelievable uh jim thomas lucky dog uh, randy lucas got that right jt yeah he, <laughs> he's loving it silo all i can say randy is have a painkiller for me <laughs> my favorite on board drink ah <laughs> Iskew Park. Hello, Bruce and my fellow subbers. It's Iskew in Thunder Bay, Ontario. It's minus six Celsius. That's got to be about 20, 23 Fahrenheit, 24 Fahrenheit. Uh, and sunny here. I'm sick of this snow. Laughing out loud. Yeah, Thunder Bay. It's going to take a while for you to thaw out. Unbelievable. Desi Wagner is here. Hi, all. John B. Hi, Bruce. It's Friday. Yes, it is, John. It's Friday. Thank goodness. Wendy Thompson. Hi, Bruce. Hi, everyone. Uh, rum and coke on ice i saw fox news had ncl sun on it i'm so ready for spring and our move to florida yes you are i know you can taste it it's just around the corner for you fantastic <clears throat> i'm so glad that fox picked up the story this is great west morrison hello bruce from corpus christi texas where it is 85 degrees taking a weekend beach trip like as if as if new bronze new Braunfels, texas in the 80s wasn't good enough for him no now he's in corpus christi uh heading for the beach <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Wes. I love it. Uh, you're killing me, but I love it. That's awesome stuff, man. Wendy Thompson, uh, <laughs> Randy Roman Coke here too. Uh, Scott Batchley. Hi, Bruce and everyone. Another nice day in Ventura today. 66 is sunny. Oh, that's all right. The sea Keeper, Sea Lid Keeper. Hi, Bruce. 83 Fahrenheit and sunny in the shade here in South Florida. Slight breeze and very enjoyable. Please, some good news about Norwegian sun and the seaside. Thumbs up. Oh, I hope so. I got your email, by the way, Sea Lid. Thank you. I've been watching that. Silo, espresso, and Depeche Mode in the backyard. Well, there you go. That's a good way to spend Friday afternoon. Getting ready for the weekend. That's all right. 
Nina Frank is in Sweden. Hi, Bruce and all. Finally, spring in Sweden. Sunny and 14 degrees Celsius. Can't believe that people thinking of cruising with NCL after this. They should boycott that line completely. Welcome back, Nina. Debbie Manuel. Hi, everyone. Hi, Bruce. Raining and only 66 degrees here today in Northern California. Uh, yeah, you know, that rain, it's, it's a curse, but it's a blessing, isn't it? Because California has been so dry. Unbelievable, but it would be nice if it were a bit, nor a bit warmer, wouldn't it? Paul Wilgus, uh, hi, Bruce, 60 here in Virginia, but snow tomorrow morning. Oh, no. No! I feel like that guy from uh, Modern Family. No! <laughs> uh, Phil's, Phil's, Phil's Osophies. Oh, I love that. Kathy Butler, congrats on 1.6, 1,600 subs, Bruce. We had a wonderful community. We have a wonderful community here, and it's growing out. It's just growing out and spreading out. Uh, I see no end to it. Uh, yeah, 1621 right now. We just blew through 1,600, just whoosh, like it wasn't even there. Unbelievable. Uh, Nina Frank, uh, that's all a good music choice. They, <laughs> they are still so good. Wendy Thompson, 44 temperature here. I think uh, Mother Nature is very mad at, uh, at her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wendy, I, we just have to hope for better way, better days. Uh, uh, Katie Meltzer, what's your favorite cruise line? I'm going on a Carnival cruise in January. Um, my favorite cruise line, um, well, uh, of the cruise lines I've been on, uh, I really enjoyed Holland America. The Oosterdam uh, was the name of the ship. Had a wonderful cruise going down the coast of uh, Mexico from uh, San Diego down to Cabo San Lucas, Mazatlan, and uh, Puerto Vallarta. Uh, I, I've also enjoyed that cruise, that actual you know itinerary, because I live in Western Canada. So for me to fly down to LA, uh, out of say Calgary, uh, two hours, 20 minutes, and, um, and that, uh, that cruise is perfect because after the cruise is over, I love to pop over to Palm Desert, California, where I used to live, say hi to some friends, and then fly home from there. Uh, so that kind of works for me. But uh, that line was great. But I've done that itinerary twice more, both times with Princess. Uh, and I enjoyed the, the Princess uh, ships as well. Um, and I enjoyed, like I said, it's the exact same itinerary. Absolutely the exact same. I uh, enjoyed them uh, very much. Um, uh, but I, uh, I have had a couple of cruises on uh, Norwegian. I was on the Norwegian Jade back in 2008 with my daughter. Did a cruise uh, through the uh, Mediterranean. Uh, it was a 12, 11 or 12 day cruise. It was a daddy daughter deal. And uh, she was uh, turning uh, 20 at the time or about to turn 21. And um, uh, I knew this would be kind of the last time daddy daughter would ever do anything like this because <laughs> there are other men in her life now. <laughs> uh, many come a knocking. So, uh, so the daddy daughter thing is pretty well a done deal. Um, but that was a great trip. And enjoyed the Jade very much. That was a, a wonderful cruise. Uh, really enjoyed it um, and had fond memories. I also have taken the J the Norwegian cruise line. I uh, was on the Epic, and I did a one-week cruise on the Epic, a Caribbean cruise. The cruise was great. I really enjoyed it. We stopped in uh, Grand Cayman as one of our stops. I used to live in the Cayman Islands, so I, I love talking about the Caymans from time to time on this channel. Uh, but the Epic, uh, I didn't enjoy it as much as the Jade. Yep, it was such a big ship. Huge, brand new. But I enjoyed the Jade more. Uh, funny about that. Um, but, uh, uh, still it was, it was all right. Uh, was, was, was no problem with the cruise. Uh, and I've been on a Royal Caribbean ship called the Explorer of the Seas. And, um, uh, having thought about it all, uh, the itinerary was okay. We left New York city for the Caribbean, did an 11 day trip, but we ran into a storm on the way out of New York, uh, the second day and part of the third day, it was just awful. And we've seen videos now on YouTube of other people who got caught in, they call these, uh, what do they call them, bomb cyclones, these terrible storms. Uh, Norwegians uh, had a couple of cruises get caught in that. Uh, Royal Caribbeans have a couple now caught in that. And it was no fun. Let me tell you, we were tossed around and I felt awful. But um, the rest of the cruise was great. So the ship itself uh, was all right. Uh, it was a unique crew, unique creature, big ship. Uh, at the time, I think I was on that ship, was the biggest ship I'd been on to date. Then the Epic was a bit larger. Uh, but um, uh, I didn't enjoy it as much as the Oosterdam or the Jade, um, uh, to be honest. I, I enjoyed them more. Uh, but the itinerary was nice. Uh, we did go to San Juan, Puerto Rico, St. Thomas, St. Martin. This, of course, is uh, before the hurricanes. So this is a few years back now, about four or five years ago. Uh, so those are my favorites. Uh, Going to have to lead with Hall America. Now, for cruise lines I haven't been on, 
Uh, I would very much like to try celebrity. I would very much like to try Viking ocean cruises. Uh, that is a cruise ship with 930 people. All their ships are 930 people on the Viking line. Uh, something like 600 staff, very high uh, ratio from staff to passengers, very high. So service is going to be pretty nice. Um, all inclusive. Um, you get a, all rooms are balcony rooms. There are no inside suites. Uh, all inclusive for, for all the specialty restaurants. Alcohol available at dinner time, lunchtime, although I'm not a drinker. My wife loves a glass of wine. Um, so I, I think I'd enjoy that because of my age. I'm 62. I'm an old, old man. <laughs> and I think I would enjoy that cruise. The average age on that ship, 65. So I'd, do, I'd be just a kid. I'd just be in high school. I just need like a teeny bopper on that thing. But I think I'd enjoy it. Uh, anyway, that's a cruise I'd like to try. And of course, any of the six star lines, you know, I'd be more than happy to try those. Uh, Seaborn, Regency, uh, Crystal Cruises, uh, you know, all, all these guys, sure. But it's dollars. It's dollars. Let's see who else is here and say hi to everybody. Uh, Silo. Oh, I know Nina. They are on tour now. May go to Ella. We're talking about the band again. Uh, Kathy Butler. Hey, Randy. Glad you're having a wonderful time on the Regal Princess. Nina Frank in Sweden saying, they were the last concert I was to in 2006. Gosh, a long time ago. Now we're getting old. We're getting old. Silo, how to trade a house for an RV video, too. <laughs> Silo. Silo is making a slight reference to this uh, April 1st video I posted the other day. Uh, something about trading a house for an RV, going on an RV, uh, you know, living full time in an RV. I thought it was a great story. Uh, Randy Lucas, thanks much. Uh, thanks very much, Kathy. John B. Post, Potsdam, New York, snowing. 35 degrees, roads are okay, uh, probably a wet snow on the roads. Uh, welcome, uh, John, back here. Uh, Stargazer's here. Hi, everybody. 60 in Kentucky. Welcome, Stargazer. Tammy Ray, good afternoon, everyone. Hi, Tammy. Nina Frank, two more days, eh, Randy? Uh, yep, he's going on his next cruise. Getting off one, Poop, right on the other. CJ Sams, good afternoon. Hot and sunny in Orlando, Florida. Welcome back. Uh, Randy, uh, retract a message. Gary M., hi, Bruce. Talking of gas, how much per liter in B.C.? Dollar thirty per liter in Petrolia, Ontario. Petrolia, there's a name. The birthplace of Imperial Oil in Canada. There you go. That's why they call it Petrolia. Um, here in British Columbia, one twenty-five where I am in Creston, but in good old Vancouver, uh, about eight hours by car to the west, over a buck fifty, almost a dollar fifty-five a liter over there. Uh, all the tree huggers and all those pipeline protesters are paying top dollar in this country for fuel. And they want us to pay more because they don't want the pipelines to go through their town. Uh, they, they want the convenience and they want to fly on the jets to Palm Springs and whatever, but they don't want to, they don't want any part to help the industry. Oh, God forbid that. How can you tell I'm from Alberta? <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Uh, folks in the, those of you in the United States, $1.30 a liter uh, in Ontario for gas. What does that mean? If you multiply that by almost four, You'll come up with about five twenty. Let's call it five bucks. That's five bucks Canadian for a gallon, a U.S. gallon of gas. So uh, take off about thirty percent, a buck, three fifty a gallon in Ontario at least for a gallon of gas. What do you folks pay in the United States? You're not paying three fifty a gallon in the U.S. I don't even think California is paying three fifty a gallon. Maybe Hawaii, M maybe, but yeah, I know in Arizona, my buddy keeps bragging to me. Oh yeah, we're down to a dollar twenenty a gallon. I mean, he just kills me. He just kills me. Unbelievable. Uh, Kelly Stajanovic. Uh, hey, Bruce. Hi, guys. We leave in nine hours for Tampa. Then Sunday on a cruise, Ohio is cloudy and drizzling in the 50s. What do you care, Kelly? It could blizzard there all at once. As soon as you get out of town, the weather can go to heck. <laughs> you're going on a cruise. Absolutely fantastic. Let us know how it's going. If you're able to talk to us when you're on the ship, by all means, do so. Otherwise, we'll hear from you when you're back, and you can let us know how it went. This is awesome stuff. Mighty Joy number one, NCL announced earlier today they are giving 100% refunds uh, to those Sun Cruisers. It's not a refund. It's not a refund. I hate to break it to you uh, unless there's something new, new, new going on. I have been told that it is a credit towards a future cruise based on what the cruisers paid for their cruise. And it's only on the Pan Am Canal, the Panama Canal cruise. So for those cruisers on the Panama Canal cruise, they're getting a 100% credit against a future cruise good for four years on Norwegian. 
A lot of those folks want nothing to do with Norwegian right now. They just want a full refund of their money. Uh, and I'm also told that this refund, uh, Mighty Joy, is not for the cost of the taxes and the fees, doesn't cover the tips, doesn't cover any onboard expenses, obviously, and it doesn't cover any airfare, how to get how they got there, especially those poor folks out of Europe flew across the Atlantic and back for a cruise of a lifetime, a dream cruise, and they end up getting this. It's just terrible. Paula K. Hi, Bruce. Upper 50s in Hanover. It was sunny now, overcast. Not complaining, though. <laughs> Welcome back, Paula K., one of my first ever followers of this uh, live stream. Randy Lucas, uh, Nina, nope, we have 24 more days aboard. That's right, two more cruises back-to-back. -back. Stargazer, congratulations on your subs. Thanks, Stargazer. Nina Frank, lucky you, Randy. Randy, yup, I'm lucky. Mighty Joy, correction, 100% credit. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> now, had I seen that on my screen, I, I wouldn't have gone off on it, but yeah, I didn't notice it. Uh, it's all good, Mighty Joy. Uh, Randy Lucas Bruce, wasn't just last week you were at 1,200 subs? Uh, 12, 1,300, yeah. And it just, boom, just popped up. Kathy Butler, the good thing about those passengers and the cruise community coming together is it puts all the cruise lines on notice. Construction cruises will not be tolerated. This is it. I mean, these cruise lines are making so much money, hand over fist. Uh, the business is growing at, what, 5 6 7% a year. Uh, they were expecting, what is it, 27 million passengers you know, for the last year or so, 30 million for the next year. 48% uh, overall increase in cruisers over the next decade is what they're expecting. They're building ships to handle it all. And we know the kind of ships they're building. They're absolute monsters. Uh, you know, $1.3 billion for the Symphony of the Seas to handle 6,800 passengers, something like that. Unbelievable. Uh, but yet, uh, with all that success and all those good things happening, Norwegian pulls a stunt like this to put passengers in physical harm uh, with chemicals. They, they wouldn't be, they couldn't get, they, you, <laughs> I gotta have a tough time expressing it, so angry. You try and pull a stunt like this on a skyscraper in downtown Manhattan in New York State. You, you try that. You try and, and, and have a skyscraper get remodeled like this where people have to walk through a work zone with these chemicals being used. They'd be shut down so fast by the labor boards. You have no idea. The insurance companies would walk away from the company. They would drop them. They say, "You guys have just nullified your insurance on this entire skyscraper because if you're acting like this on the renovating of the skyscraper, we're not insuring you guys because this is a blatant, uh, a blatant breaking of laws, rules, work safety uh, rules, and it directly con contravenes the insurance policy that you guys have with us." We don't have to cover you. If there's an accident with these chemicals, we don't have to cover you guys. Not at all. Some Somebody gets ill, goes to the hospital and dies from inhaling this stuff, accidentally, whatever it is, you're on the hook for millions, millions. Unbelievable. At, yet at sea, you can, it seems like you can get away with murder at sea. It's unbelievable. Uh, I'm telling you, it just drives me nuts. Kathy, great point. Uh, Paula Kay, we were on the Regal last November in crooners also so great randy they had the best mudslides <laughs> there's some good advice right there that's good cruise advice from this channel mighty joy number one the credit was also extended to cruises taken through march 31st uh 2023 that's right they have four years to take advantage of this deal tommy eaton i agree kathy butler tammy ray yay i'm done work for the day i can actually watch now i don't have to cheat on my boss i can actually watch this show without sneaking around and closing my office door and <laughs> this is great uh debbie boy debbie just got here miss anything oh just me ranting about the norwegian sun that's you know the, the par for the course this week um and saying hi to everybody uh sea keeper favorite cruise lines royal caribbean celebrity norwegian princess and hall america basically anywhere they will pamper me the ship is the destination for me there you go exactly right mary w hi everyone 35 degrees and snowing here in new hampshire welcome back mary I haven't seen you for a while nice to have you here silo bruce gave away <laughs> bruce gave away free drinks <laughs> tammy ray uh laugh out loud 62 is not old that, well thank you very much it's it, you know today's 62 is like yesterday's 32 is that what they say you know i don't know we'll see uh, Kathy Butler, airlines get away with crazy fees because passengers did not band together and boycott. That's, there you go. Passengers just took it. We just took it. And now we're getting it. We're still getting it. It's unbelievable. The nonsense these airlines are pulling off. 
Dead boy Debbie, one degree Celsius in Coburg, where spring, not in Coburg, Ontario. No, not yet, no. PJ Drayton, snowing and cold in Omaha. Where's spring? It's not in Omaha either. It's not in Omaha. I, unbelievable. Steaming bean, I spread the news on the um, Norwegian Sun on the Traveler uh, Facebook page for the Norwegian Escape. Uh, man, many of the folks were ticked off at me. Uh, yeah, like as if you're like as if you're uh, a bad guy or something. You, you, you know, you're telling them, hey, you know, uh, wake up and smell the Kool Aid here, folks. It isn't all puppies and and pussy cats and and kittens. You know, there's sometimes crap happens, and we have to know this stuff as a, as a traveler. You should know. You should be aware of the worst case scenarios. And here is a classic one. Unbelievable. <laughs> it's you part. Regular fuel is now $1.36 a liter. Just jumped five cents up in Thunder Bay. Deb Boy, Debbie, good for you. The Steaming Bean, let's get it out there. Uh, this is not acceptable. Steaming Bean, I guess they felt threatened that their cruise line was critiqued. Yeah, like, gee, you know, like they're perfect in every way, aren't they? Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, Jim Thomas, three nineteen dollars a gallon. Kelly Stjernovic, gas was two ninety nine dollars today. <laughs> Mary W., two thirty six dollars a gallon here in New Hampshire. Oh, man, you're killing me. Uh, sea Keeper, two forty U.S. a gallon yesterday here. Love it. Uh, Kathy Butler, Kelly, what cruise line ship are, are you sailing on? Uh, well, I don't know. Tommy Eden, two fifty nine a gallon in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, Kathy Butler, you're right. A cruise credit is not a refund. Iskew Park refund is for the lowest basic cost of just the ship's room. Dead boy, Debbie, I will never go on NCL. Wasn't impressed with it anyway. Silo is saying seems a lot of people took past. The history of Carnival, just saying, lo or looking past the history of Carnival, just saying. Tammy Ray, um, uh, Randy Lucas, I kind of jealous of you right now. <laughs> we all are. <laughs> Nina Frank, they actually apologize. So now there's a material for a lawsuit that, that you know, you never know. Tammy Ray, Silo Steve, yes, I love Carnival. Iskew Park is saying what the owners of the Sun need is a boycott of their ships. Make them pay by empty ships. They'll learn fast and it'll send a message to the rest of the ship companies. Randy Lucas. Tammy, by the time this trip is all over, I expect it to be the most hated guy on the channel. <laughs> oh, poor Randy. <laughs> he can't catch a break. He's on a beautiful cruise, and everybody hates him. We don't hate Randy. We love Randy. We're just envious of Randy. You know, we may not want to be Randy, but we kind of like to be near Randy right now. You know, I wouldn't mind looking across the barn just waving at the guy. I'd like to be on the same ship. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Tammy Ray, uh, but I've never had issues with them either. Tammy Ray, uh, nope, respect for me for having the opportunity to be so lucky. Uh, Wendy Thompson, nine ships being built now through 2027. Funny restaurants want customers to come back, yet cruise lines, cruise line laws, word of mouth is good and bad. Bring them in or just keep them away. There's, uh, you know, so many of us upset about this. It's unreal. Tammy Ray, Bruce, um, I am my boss. I run a day home during the week. Right on. Uh, Nina Frank, exactly. Askew. Kathy Butler, no way, Randy. We can't wait to hear uh, your trip report. Mary W. Bruce, I'm usually here, but just listening while I get stuff done. It's all good. Uh, Kathy Butler, the great thing about uh, cruising is that there are so many choices of cruise lines and ships, something for, for everyone, and you can choose wisely. Uh, that's true. Uh, Ulani is here. Uh, uh oh, now Royal Caribbean is paying you to talk about Norwegian Cruise Line instead of MSC. See, there you go. That's what was happening last week, two weeks ago. People were saying, "Oh, Bruce, you're you're slamming MSC the seaside. You're being paid by Royal Caribbean under the table, aren't you? That's what you're doing. They're paying you to talk bad. Now they're paying you to talk bad about Norwegian. Who are you going to talk about next week? Who who are you going to talk about next week?" <laughs> Sylvia's here today. Hi, Bruce, 71 and sunny in Greensboro. Hi, Sylvia. The steaming bean, I would rather spend 15 days on the road with no, Nomadic Fanatic and his cat than on the Norwegian sun. <laughs> now, don't bring Eric into this. Eric and his cat, Jax, have nothing to do with this story, uh, but they're both great. I love watching them. Uh, but, oh, my goodness. Peter Heckema, 2.45 a gallon of gas in Tarpon Springs. What's wrong with that? Uh, Jim Thomas, I got knee surgery on the 26th. Hopefully, I can go on a cruise after rehab. Well, yeah, absolutely. I hit, you know, once you get the uh, the, uh, the knee all, you know, the bandages all off, and you'll do your uh, you'll do your uh, physio. Uh, get on that cruise ship and uh, get your uh, get yourself in one of those nice hot tubs with the jets. And oh man, that'll be great, fantastic. Uh, Silo, I don't have an issue with Norwegian. Uh, made a slight complaint about the Butler service. Got four hundred dollars onboard credit for our next trip. 
Cannot defend construction on the sun. Still going on the bliss, though. Yeah, uh, yeah. Can't defend the construction on the sun. Not at all. Uh, Kathy Butler, good luck with surgery, Jim. Cam Wilson, hey, everybody. Kathy Butler, wow, Salo. Nice to hear a good story about Norwegian. Proves they can do the right thing when you get the right person. The bliss looks wonderful. Jim Thomas, thanks, Kathy. Cam Wilson laughing out loud. Uh, Silo, well, I guess if you stay in the haven and complain, they listen. Took a while. I was surprised. Uh, and Sandy Nystrom, horrible experience on their Norwegian son. They should be ashamed of themselves, putting us as well as their crew in harm's way, disgusted, having to endure 60 nights of hell on earth. Sandy, tell me, were you on board that ship? It sounds like you were. I'd be dying to know if you were on that ship. Let me know. Say, yes, I was. No, I wasn't. Uh, because uh, I tell you that the stories coming out are just unbelievable. Uh, I, uh, uh, the photos I've seen and the videos I've seen, um, I've had a number of the folks on that Facebook page send me their photos and videos. I could post them on my on my channel, which I really appreciate. Uh, yes, she said I was on that ship. Fantastic. Uh, Sandy, were you in a uh, one of the balcony rooms near the decks, or were you in an inside room? <laughs> Unfortunately. Uh, how close were you, you know, with regard to your room, how close were you to the construction of the, of that, uh, of the decks? Uh, I'll be kind of know, kind of like to know that, uh, were you, uh, you know, did you hear those bloody awful, uh, jackhammers, uh, right outside your room or, uh, <clears throat> and what about the, uh, uh, sorry, what about the, uh, um, uh, what about the, uh, the, uh, the air, the air quality in your room. Uh, did you have a balcony room so you could let air in from the outside, or were you trapped inside? And how was the quality? Uh, I'd be love to love to know if you could uh, let us know on that. Uh, I was inside, thank God. Smelt the fumes uh, and running fans daily. Oh man, oh man, uh, unbelievable. I mean, I know people were ill on board from the uh, from the uh, orders. They went downstairs to uh, to the doctors. Uh, you know, there's a doctor station, and I'm told in some cases. They were being told that they got to cough up 200 bucks up front just to even be seen by the doctor. I mean, just cough up money right now. I heard someone, uh, I read somewhere that somebody had to pay for uh, multiple treatments. They were down there, 10,000 bucks it cost them in the in medical bills before they could get off the darn ship. It's unbelievable. Uh, here's the the gang is coming in now. Uh, uh, Sandy, they're asking you questions. Sorry, you had a hellish cruise. Kathy wants to know, are you feeling okay right now? Tammy Ray, uh, uh, just talking about somebody else, uh, Kathy. Are you are you ha not having? Are you having any side effects from the cruise yourself, or, or how are you doing with that? Um, I'd be love to know. What about the food? Was the food okay? I mean, I, I mean, imagine the food is all right, but did you have any issues with regards to uh, uh, you know any of the particles landing in your food? I mean, you probably avoided the outside food like the plague. I'm sure. Then you were saying was reading a book outside one day. Stopped reading to touch my chest and arms to find insulation all over myself unbelievable uh i'm okay just coughing uh that's just insane that's just insane uh that's awful tammy saying uh i can say my my viewers here have been just uh, uh just like me are really curious what was going on over there sandy food was okay except for the insulation that went into it there you go yeah isn't that ridiculous uh insulation you can't breathe in insulation uh kathy saying right exactly right uh this is this is just ridiculous um uh, uh, did you happen to notice them offloading all the, uh, the chemicals, the empty containers, all the garbage in Ensenada when you, when you pulled in there, did, did, did the passengers uh, notice that? And was that the talk of the ship at all? Cause by the time they got to LA, uh, they wouldn't have had any evidence left of any of those chemicals if they dumped them off in Ensenada. I was just curious. Uh, someone told me that that had happened. Uh, and then, uh, I've also found out since, uh, your cruise. Uh, in the last 24 hours, I have found out that the crews leaving um, Buenos Aires uh, in Argentina on the 2nd of February, they were working on that cruise. They were working on the decks starting February the 2nd until March the 5th, heading all the way to Miami. Uh, unbelievable. This had been going on for almost two months. Um, let's see. Sandy. Oh, yes. In Ensenada, hiding the evidence. There you go. Jim Thomas. Uh, Sandy, that's so wrong. You should have never... I have to deal with that crap. Wendy Thompson, Sandy, uh, not if the insulation gets in your lungs. Uh, um, Sylvia St. Kathy, uh, go on the uh, DR ASAP for a checkup. Go to the doctor uh, ASAP for a checkup. Uh, Silo, we are hearing of work being done on previous cruises. Did you notice work that had been done and not finished uh, on the cruise that you were on? That's interesting. 
Uh, yeah, to com complete this story, Buenos Aires from February the 2nd until March the 5th, they were working on it. Then uh, there was a short cruise from the 5th to the 9th, from what I can gather. Uh, I don't have much information on that, but the next cruise was March 9th to March 16th, the Western Caribbean, and then was the Panama cruise, Panama Canal, March 16th to the 31st. And that's the one that uh, Sandy was on here that we're talking to right now. Uh, let's see here, Silo, we're hearing of work being done. Nina, I, uh, I see you following my fashion tip, Bruce. Oh, I'm wearing, yeah, you told me white and blue. You, t you say it. it, Bruce, you look good in white. You look good. Blue. You know, when a woman tells you that, you know, you look good in white or blue, what do you start wearing red and orange? What do you, what do you think? Are you nuts? I mean, you, you know, you go with the flow. I mean, <laughs> Silo, he looks great in virgin white. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, uh, Tommy Eaton, two months of construction, yet, yet they are in dry dock for only two weeks in Canada. See, here's this is the thing about this whole episode. Two months of work was done on these decks. Why? Because they thought they could get away with it. They thought, somebody thought, some bean counter thought this would be a great idea. We can cut down the amount of days in dry dock by doing work before we get the dry dock and we'll just do it in the international waters. We won't have to worry about all these environmental rules from different countries or different uh, jurisdictions. We won't have to worry about U.S. rules and regulations and worker safety. But they got, forgot one thing. They forgot the passenger safety. 2,000 people on each cruise plus the thousand uh, the crew, the thousand crew that are stuck on that cruise. Uh, unbelievable. It's just, it's just crazy. Uh, Sandy saying, uh, never noticed work not finished from beforehand. Construction zone really started after day two of the cruise. Uh, Sado, are there uh, picketers at the shipyard? I, I, I don't, I've not heard anything about that. Uh, Nina Frank smiling. Sea Keeper, like me, he would probably look. Um, <laughs> I can't even pronounce that. I, I don't I don't know. How do you say that word? I don't know how to say that word. Mahaviolus in pink, too. I, I don't know what to say about that. Uh, <laughs> Kathy, also, the ship is moving back and forth, up and down during this construction. So dangerous to the workers doing these jobs, let alone the passengers that were endangered to the steaming beans. Some of the folks who blindly support these cruise companies remind me of those middle-aged adults who live for Disney. <laughs> Peter Heckema, they couldn't start work before because they were not in international waters. And that, that's right. Uh, after the second day, they were free to abuse. Um, here's the other story that I picked up. Again, I, I mentioned this in the video. I'll mention it to you folks. Unbelievable. On the Western Caribbean cruise between the 9th and 16th of uh, March, the one stop they had was in Cozumel. Now, for those of you who've been to Cozumel, Mexico, uh, and for those of you who don't, but those of you who have, you know this, there are, there's a huge pier there, really long pier that can take a number of cruise ships at the same time in Cozumel. And uh, the Cozumel uh, uh, port, it's booked. Every cruise ship books their ships in there in sequence. And so the day that the, uh, the uh, Norwegian sun showed up, they were expected in Cozumel. It wasn't like they showed up by surprise. But I can tell you right now, uh, the passengers were puzzled as to why wasn't the ship pulling up to the pier because they were ex they were expecting to go to Cozumel. They got their flyer the night before as expected. The itinerary told them they were going to visit Cozumel. And a number of passengers had tours booked for Cozumel, and they wanted to get off the ship. And I'm sure some of them wanted to get off the ship real bad to get at least away from this mess for a couple of hours. But the ship wasn't pulling up to the pier. It stayed out in the water. And uh, they announced that uh, to get to Cozumel, you have to take a tender. Well, the problem with the tender is they were working on the decks with these chemicals and they had roped off whole sections of the tenders and the promenade deck. So a bunch of the tenders weren't, work, weren't running. They were tied up. So they only took three loads of passengers off the ship onto tenders with a two-hour wait for each load of passengers to get to Cozumel. <laughs> By the time you took the third load, that's six hours. It's now two in the afternoon. You can't take any more passengers to Cozumel. You got to bring the ones back that you have in Cozumel back to the ship because it's going to take six hours to complete the job the other way. A complete disaster. And why didn't the ship 
uh, dock at the pier. Story goes, the workers were working on the ship, the toxic fumes were coming off, the dust was coming up. The uh, Cozumel authorities wouldn't let, them, wouldn't let them dock the ship. Too hazardous. There was another ship already parked there. Who, who wants to have this ship spewing their crap into the air onto the other ship on the other side of the pier and then down on the passengers walking along the pier? Mexico doesn't want that. And yet these guys are pulling off this stunt even in port in Cozumel. Unbelievable, uh, ridiculous, how they were able to unload everything in Ensenada blows my mind. I don't know how they got away with it. I, I don't know why would Ensenada allow them to drop and dump their garbage, their environmentally dangerous, toxic and hazardous chemicals and all the decking and stuff right in Ensenada. And then they arrived in LA all clean, no problems here, nothing to see here unbelievable uh so i have no idea uh, uh michelle is saying saint thomas gas 359 a gallon and eight bucks for a gallon of milk ooh, 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 ooh. most beautiful water has been saint martin mesmerizing blue sad first week of cruise is over wait there's still 24 days of cruising <laughs> sea keeper uh marvelous 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 pink. I got it. Thank you, Seakeeper. Kathy <laughs> middle aged and loved Disney. Uh, <laughs> she liked that. Silo, not blind. Booked the cruise way before this incident. Tammy Ray, uh, jealous of you too, having so much fun. The Steamy Bean, I love Disney, but uh, not a cult follower. Sylvia saying, I meant Sandy, go to the doctor. I'm in the middle of working and listening to the show. Sylvia loves to travel. Got here late, almost 80 yesterday, and today it's 35, maybe sleep or snow. Wow, what a change for you guys. That's Kansas, I believe. Tammy Ray, um, hi, it loves to travel. Michelle Lucas, Tammy, uh, get that next cruise book. Can't wait for you to share. The Steaming Bean, Nomadic Fanatic's friend, Ca uh, Caravan, Carolyn, is on a princess cruise right now. That's right, she's going off Mexico. Caravan, Caroline is 60 and is not too hard on the eyes. <laughs> there he goes. Yeah, she's on. she was on the cruise uh, going down to Mexico. She's posting videos right now with her brothers uh, and some relatives. Uh, loves to travel, saying hi, Tammy. Kathy Butler, steaming bean, can't afford to be a cult follower. Plus, they are outpricing most Americans and catering to the wealthy. It's awful. I live in Orlando. Can't, can't go. Tammy Ray, um, Michelle Lucas, until I can retire 15 years down the road, I'm uh, out of luck unless I win a lottery. Uh, Kathy Butler, Sandy, I'm so sorry for your vacation was ruined, and I pray you don't have any lasting health effects. Was guest services helpful at all? Did you attend the talk with the captain? Oh, I'd love to know that. Uh, were you there for that? Uh, we saw the video. It wasn't. It wasn't pretty. Uh, it didn't go over well. Uh, we we have heard a story, and I can't confirm this, and I haven't read it anywhere else. But the story goes that uh, the captain was new. Uh, it was his first cruise, apparently. Uh, he'd only been with the cruise line a couple of days. I I, I don't know if this is true. I, I'd really love to know. Um, I sure like to know if I can find out about the 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 other captain. If this really is true. Did the other captain have enough, like up to here, with the stunts being pulled in uh, Buenos Aires to Miami, and then the second cruise and the Western Caribbean cruise, and then they walked out and just quit, and then they brought in this flunky to uh, handle it? Uh, what was that all about? I don't know. Sandy saying, guest services did the best they could in a shitty situation. The captain was not around. Dork, uh, I, I, I am, yeah, I am, it's unbelievable. I. Uh, yeah, like I say, this this uh, this is a disaster. Uh, this is a complete dereliction of duty. This is a complete betrayal to the passengers, uh, to the customers of the company. Um, shareholders should be shocked that uh, they're pulling off stunts like this because you only have to get caught once in the wrong jurisdiction to run into all kinds of problems. Uh, shareholders of Norwegian Cruise Line should be nervous that the company is pulling a stunt like this on this ship because it can't be the only one. It, 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 this couldn't possibly be the only ship they're doing this with. Uh, maybe they've planned to do it on others, or they've done it on others and gotten away with it without too many complaints. Uh, because you get caught pulling off something like this in the wrong jurisdiction, you are in a world of regulatory hurt. And you'll have insurance revoked, uh, or your insurance rates will just skyrocket. I mean, the liability insurance that if I were carrying the insurance for Norwegian Cruise Line, I'd be looking at that line very carefully about upping their rates. Uh, and for shareholders, not a good sign. You don't, you don't want to have a 5% reduction in profits because they're pulling crap like this. 
uh, increasing their costs through liability costs because that could affect the stock by 10, 20 percent. Every pension fund that owns Norwegian Cruise Line stock will not be happy. This is not good stuff. Uh, you know, these these uh, cruisers, I, I tip my cap to the folks that are on that Facebook page uh, banding together like that, 900 of them already and counting. Uh, these folks have power. Uh, as a group, they have power. You know what they could also do is they could contact all the pension funds out there that own shares in Norwegian Cruise Lines. And they could say to these guys, uh, I don't think you should be as a as a uh, investor holding shares in this company. Uh, immoral. Uh, what they've done is is, is unforgivable. Of the 9,000 people that were on those four cruises, 9,000, how many were expectant mothers that uh, are very early in their pregnancy? And they were exposed to these chemicals that are unbelievably hazardous to, to, uh, to the fetus. Are we going to have birth defects uh, to deal with going forward? I mean, I don't know. Uh, this is this is uh, uh, just an unforgivable crime. It really is. Uh, the uh, the cruise line, uh, you know, it, it goes right to the top, of course, but somewhere in that management level, this idea was hatched and was cooked up, but it passed committees. It passed layers of management to be given the green light. And uh, I don't know about the leadership of this company. What are they going to do about it? I mean, apologizing to cruisers is one thing. Offering a credit for a cruise is another, but that doesn't solve the issue or the corporate culture issue that we have here. There is a serious problem within the corporate culture of this entity, and I'm praying it's only this entity. I'm hoping that there that it, this isn't a standard in the business. Uh, we have to really be mindful, and this is why as cruisers as customers we have to be vigilant and keep our eyes and ears open as to what is going on out there and don't blindly walk down the path of happiness like it's a yellow brick road and everything's going to be all right uh it might not be all right and sometimes we have to take action ourselves and really watch what we're getting ourselves into it can be life threatening even as simple as going on a cruise ridiculous it's just ridiculous uh, let's see what we have here. Uh, <laughs> uh, Sandy had that comment. Steamy Bean is saying, bring back Captain Stubing. <laughs> yeah, we will all trust Captain Stubing, right? Kathy uh, Butler, uh, L-A-M-O, uh, Steaming Bean, <laughs> L L M A O. Uh, Kathy, I would like to know how far up the approval for this mess goes in the NCL corporate ladder. Me too. I'd love to know that. Nina Frank, Scandinavian Heritage, uh, Sandy Nystrom. Uh, she's questioning. Uh, San, uh, Steamy Bean, there was a Nystrom who played hockey. That's true. Bob Nystrom. Uh, uh, Islanders played with the Islanders. Uh, Tommy Eaton, I'm surprised the CEO and top officials haven't been called to the corporate board meeting. I, I'm kind of wondering, Tommy, if there's an investigation going on internally right now, trying to figure this thing out. I, I don't know. Betsy Lane, hello, plus five in Hamilton. Hi, Betsy. Uh, Sandy, excellent point. Corporate crooks. There you go. Uh, Nina, Frank, Nystrom, uh, Swedish name. Yep, that is. Kathy uh, Butler, good point, Bruce. I would sell my NCL shares if I had any. Um, I mean, this story is getting bigger. And I've heard uh, on the Facebook page, they were saying that uh, NBC is picking it up tonight. Uh, it might be on television tonight. Uh, this could make CNN um, and MSNBC and you know others. Uh, and if it goes that way, and if they do the digging, and, and it doesn't take much, believe me, folks, I'm just a guy out of Crescent, British Columbia who's passionate about cruising. Um, I did a little bit of digging today and found out that February the 2nd, this started until March the 31st. And we're not done yet because we're in dry dock now. So it's already been about 60 days that this has been going on. Now we've got dry dock, which fine. They can do anything they want there and do all the dirty work. Please do it there. But then we've got that cruise after, the repositioning cruise from Seattle back to uh, Port Canaveral. And I got to tell you, uh, if, if Norwegian, if Norwegian has any workers on that ship, oh no, that would be the dumbest move they could make. The dumbest move. Because between now and next week, if this story keeps ramping up and winding up and getting kind of viralized with the television networks, 
uh, Norwegian will be in a world of hurt if they pull off, they try to pull off this stunt of having workers on the cruise back to uh, point, uh, Port Canaveral. Uh, Fort Canaveral. Uh, I just, oh, man, I just, um, I don't know. I just, I just don't know what, what are they thinking? If there's anyone thinking, are they paying attention? I'm sure the PR department is watching this. The PR department has to be watching me and anyone else on YouTube, and then anyone else on Twitter, and now these folks on Facebook, they gotta be watching. But if they're not horrified, they should be. They should be pooping in their boots. They should be doing MSEC side in their boots right now. What's going on here? Because this could spiral out of control and really go viral. I, I tell you, it's unbelievable. They did the wrong thing by trying to buy these people off with a 25% credit on a cruise, but you gotta take it in one year. Oh man, did they blow that one? Now they're doing this, you know, refund thing. Uh, not a refund, a cruise credit thing for four years. Uh, they've already stepped up to that, and the folks on Facebook don't want any part of that. They want their money back. Uh, unbelievable. They want their vacation back, but you know, it's insane. Tammy Ray, I wonder how many people have tried to cancel the next Sun Cruise. Good question, uh, Michelle Lucas. Hey all. Cruising bingo, how do you play on table on tablets? What happened to dop, doppers? <laughs> do you do you play when on cruises? Lost in bingo. Uh, I've never been on the bingo level of a cruise ship. I've always meant to, but I've never made it. Uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, one day when I do, but I, I think nowadays, uh, I'm not sure. Is it all electronic? You just, you just use your finger and exit out? I, I don't even know. Uh, Kathy Butler saying is asking Sandy, will you use the ship credit? What's what are you going to do, Sandy? Are you uh, are you waiting for you know the thing? To, I, I would imagine you're probably waiting for everything to settle down and see if this is as far as it goes. Uh, Steaming Bean Bruce, you made me laugh with the MSC joke, <laughs> and I spilled my bowl of vanilla ice cream. <laughs> Look, don't give me a thumbs down for that. It's not my fault. You can't hang on to your bowl of vanilla ice cream when I'm popping a fast one. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I have too much fun on these uh, telecasts. As you can plainly see, I'm having fun. 31 thumbs ups today. Thank you very much, everybody. Please give me thumbs ups. We love them. Uh, I love it. This is great. Uh, any more comments about the uh, Norwegian Sun? I would love it. If Sandy's still with us, I'd love to. She, she gave us any more info. Um, I'm going to keep uh, in touch with the folks on the Facebook page and and keep in touch with those guys to see uh, you know where they're at and what's happening because as I said this is like an onion I peel away one layer and there's more I peel away another layer and there's more it just isn't ending uh, I don't know how far back this thing's going to go Sandy is now writing my hubby and I have yet to decide whether we will use the credit or not waiting for the dust to settle literally the dust to settle for now and I can't blame you Sandy for that uh, I really think you should wait and see uh, you've got plenty of time obviously Silo, uh, past the point of canceling for the next uh, Sun Cruise, they are in it. So they're either, they either forfeit their money, I suppose, and don't go, uh, you know, or go. Uh, so this will be interesting. Uh, Iskew Park, Bruce, what's the link to this Facebook group? Uh, they're called the Panama Canal Sun. That's the name of the, the, the chat, the group chat. It's Panama Canal Sun on Facebook. So look that up and see if you can dig that up. Um, let's see here. Iskew Park is uh, asking me, Kathy, probably why, Sandy, you may end up with a better settlement. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, even if you, even if you took the, you know, I, I have a feeling that what's likely going to happen is that Norwegian won't take this off the table. They'll probably leave this, but if they sweeten the offer, they'll add to this and keep this on the table the whole time, uh, because they will want, they want to get these people back. But I think they should be making an offer to all 9,000. Not to the 2,000 on the Panama, only that cruise. What about the folks from uh, Buenos Aires to Miami? What about the folks on that short little cruise? What about the folks of the Western Caribbean who are stuck with the same nonsense uh, that were stuck on that cruise? Uh, they should all be compensated for this mess. Um, and I haven't heard any other offers to anyone else that I'm aware of at this point. Um, let's see. <laughs> uh, Steaming Bean, I should tell this on my YouTube channel, The Steaming Bean. You should. You should. You, you should, yeah, yeah, Bring, let it get it out there. Um, Kathy Butler, Sandy, uh, was this your first cruise with Norwegian? Sandy, yes, first with Norwegian, yeah. Debbie Manuel, uh, sorry I was here today, but on phone all the show. 
uh, the price of listening at work. We'll catch all the info once I get home tonight. Have a good weekend. <laughs> Debbie, great to have you back as always. Have a great weekend. Thank you for all your support. I uh, love it. And uh, we'll, I'll be on tomorrow too if you can make it. Uh, we'll have some fun tomorrow. Uh, yeah, you know, this, uh, this, uh, these four cruises, 9,000, that's 8,000 passengers and the crew. What about the crew? They've been on this ship the whole time. These workers, you know, downstairs in the kitchens and, and in the laundry area, the janitorial, all the workers in the rooms, all those guys and girls doing the hallways and doing your vetting. Um, uh, they've been exposed to this for two months. Uh, Sandy here is talking about having a cough. What about those guys? How are those kids doing on the ship? They've been on that thing the whole time, and they haven't been given masks. They don't have suits on. Uh, you got to wonder what the what the heck's going on in the bottom of that ship. How many crew people have gone to the doctor for uh, a checkup and a look? Uh, this has got to be frightening. I, I just I can't understand and believe that Norwegian is 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 oblivious to the fact that they've got this problem with their passengers. What about their thousand crew members? And what about these officers on the on board the deck, the hotel managers, the senior managers? Like I'm talking about the folks that run this place, that handle these workers. What about their health? Uh, you don't think they talk to fellow employees about what's going on here? I, I'm just stunned. I'm just completely, this is so unusual uh, from a corporate action for me to comprehend. This, this, uh, this is a stunt you pull off if you're, uh, you're, uh, you know, uh, you're related to a dictator <laughs> in a country that has a dictator and you can pull off anything because you rule. You've got the secret police on your side. You've got the military on your side. There are no environmentalists. There are no lawyers. <laughs> the judges are all bought off. That's where you pull this stunt off. But Going after American travelers uh, as your primary market and Canadian uh, travelers, European travelers, you're going after first worlders uh, out of Miami, um, and you're trying to pull this kind of nonsense for two whole months, and you're poisoning your crew at the same time, and you think you can get away with this, and this is okay? This is, the, is that your corporate culture over there? What are you guys thinking at Norwegian? What, what's going on? And the folks at Carnival, you better be paying attention. And the same at Royal Caribbean. You better be watching this story and double check your internals because you don't want to get caught with this one. You, this, this one is like a pit bull that just isn't going to let go. It is a nasty little story. Uh, and I think it's going to be circulating for quite some while. And it's going to cost Norwegian more than they thought they were saving by getting all this work done on the decks rather than do it on the dry dock. It's unbelievable. It's just ridiculous. Uh, let's see here, uh, Kathy Butler, as much as I get annoyed with social media, this Norwegian cruise line mess is a great example of how powerful and helpful social media can be when utilized correctly. And Sandy, exactly. All the crew should go to the doctor worried about their health 100%. Right on. Silo, the wishy-washy, the washy-washy guy. Sandy Nystrom, at the company's expense, of course. Absolutely. Yeah, they, they will pay medical. Kathy Butler, I wonder if the crew contracts prohibit them from speaking out. Oh, I'm I'm wondering that too. I, you know, you don't see any folks from Norwegian commenting about it. And if you go to all those happy uh, pussy cats and kitten websites, all those uh, chat sites for Norwegian, all the, you know, the, the 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 Facebook page for the Bliss, the Facebook page for the uh, Getaway, the Facebook page for the Jade, the Facebook page for Norwegian as a whole, no mention of this. Uh, no, no, no. We're keeping that quiet. I bet you the administrators are just burying this story as hard as they can, as far as they can. The folks here on this Facebook page, they called their Facebook page Panama Canal Sun. They didn't use the word Norwegian. They're not getting into trouble that way. But that's what they did, and that's how they've been found by their fellow travelers. Uh, so far, 900, but there were 8,000 of them on that ship over the 60 days. They got a long way to go to top out those numbers. Unbelievable. That's why I'm asking people to share my videos. Get the word out there. Spread it out there because they can watch what we're talking about here and understand just how serious this story really is. And we got to find all 8,000 people. They've got to know how many were South Americans, how many were from Spain, how many were from Italy, how many from other parts of the States, how many were you know from all over the world who, who don't know the story, haven't heard. They remember. The crap going on on board, but they have no idea 
how bad is this has become and how bad that is. How many folks have a cough right now? They don't understand where it came from. It won't go away. It's unbelievable. Just ridiculous. Um, let's see here. Uh, Tommy Eaton crew uh, may have told to be tight-lipped. Yep. Randy Lucas. See you, Bruce. Got to be dancing. Got to get my dancing shoes on. Headed up to the to cut a rut. Go, man. Go. Enjoy, uh, Grandy. We'll talk to you on the next cruise. It'll be great. Tammy Ray. Don't know if they are oblivious or just selfish for the money. Kathy Butler, the cruise line doctor, had an obligation to speak up against half ha health hazards. He took an oath. Yeah, he took the money. That's what he did. He took the cash. This guy's charging up a storm to innocent uh, passengers who have no idea what's going on, had no idea on the Panama cruise that they were the fourth cruise in a row to get nailed on this thing. They had no idea. The doctor's sitting downstairs rubbing his hands going, it's a payday for me. I got a 16-day cruise here, 2,000 patsies upstairs. Let's make them better. $200 to start. Unbelievable. I just uh, I shake my head at everybody. It's really bad. Um, Let's see here, uh, Tammy Ray, someone up top, NCL is planning on resigning soon. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, Richard uh, Bram, Bramnad is here. Bram and Bram and is here. I thought sailing into a bomb cyclone was the worst thing I'd seen. This is so much worse. Someone is driving NCL into the ground. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, this story is a, uh, it's a nightmare. It's just a nightmare story. Uh, I thought this was just a one cruise issue. Uh, you know, um, apology letter, some kind of maybe 50% refund plus a free cruise, uh, make it go away. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is worse than that. So much worse than that. It's unbelievable. I kind of feel like a special prosecutor all of a sudden, like I'm digging into this thing and finding all kinds of stuff. It's unbelievable. I'm just a guy who loves cruising. I love going on a cruise. Uh, I've enjoyed Norwegian Cruise Lines. I like Royal Caribbean. I like uh, uh, Carnival with Holland America, Princess Cruise Lines. I want to keep cruising. I do. Uh, but I have to let the people know. I got to tell my viewers, and then I got to tell the world at large. And for my viewers, uh, I had a couple of viewers who were saying to me privately, you know, why are you just going after these guys? Why don't you just let this go and forget about it? It's, you know, you, you said your thing and forget about it. It's over. And my answer is this. <laughs> You're one of my viewers. You're a subscriber of mine. And please be a, become a subscriber. There's buttons here and here. If you're a subscriber of mine and you go on a cruise and this happens to you, I'm going to talk about it for you. <laughs> you're going to let me know what happened. And I see the reaction on Facebook and everywhere else, what's going on. I'm going to let the world in on what's going on out there. Why shouldn't I? Uh, this, these are 2,000 people on this one cruise alone, 8,000 people on four cruises who got taken downtown uh, and treated badly. Uh, this is really underhanded. Uh, it's a it's a poor uh, display. Um, I, I I could use a lot worse words, but I like to be PG rated on this channel, so that's why I keep it clean. But oh, I'm ticked at this one. This is really bad stuff. Um, I'll be digging in for more information. I'll be digging up more. Uh, so anyway, there you go, Kathy. Because you might be next if you don't cause a stink. Uh, there you go, Kathy's got it. You know, if we don't talk about it, uh, if 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 no one complains about this, this egregious event, what do you think they're going to do next time? I mean, the guys in Carnival and and Royal Caribbean and Norwegian are going to go. We can do anything. Oh, we could we could shoot AK forty sevens into the air and no one will complain. Oh, this is fantastic. Why don't we do a complete rebuild on the on the ocean, and we'll have people pay us on board while we do it? I mean, you got to be kidding me. This has got to stop right here, right now, and there's got to be rules put in place. Now, whether the the uh, the maritime uh, people do this or whether the cruise association, what about the travel agents? Where are the cruise travel agents association? Where are they? I haven't heard a peep out of those guys. Uh, travel agents have just gone quiet and thrown away the key. Nothing's being said. I've watched a couple of videos today. They were all pussy cats and uh, and kittens. Everything's fine now. It's all okay. They're giving a refund for a future cruise. It's not okay. It's not fine now. Nothing's fine now. This thing hasn't even started yet. This is so far from being fine now. Uh, we're not back to normal. No one's back to normal on this one. This is just only the beginning of a long ordeal. 
and it's up to the 900 plus members and the other 7,100 innocent victims out there to get together and uh, get the word out that there were four cruises that this was done on to 8,000 travelers and 1,000 crew. It's just ridiculous. If we don't talk, they'll just keep doing it. They'll, they'll just feel, oh, yeah, we can do anything we want. It's a piece of cake. Unbelievable. Uh, Richard, the only way to stop is it really hits them in the wallet. Corporate greed knows no knows no bounds. Yeah, these people think they're, they're, they've got all ultimate power. They think they have ultimate power. They have no idea. Uh, Sandy, uh, getting compensation is good and necessary. However, we're also trying to fight to not have this happen on other Norwegian vacations. Stop the insanity for everyone, passengers, crew, etc. Great. Well said, Sandy. That's exactly what I was thinking. Kathy Butler, my daughter, just called me to tell me she's on her way home, heard YouTube in the background and said, oh, Bruce is on again, laughing out loud. She knows Bruce's voice. Maybe I watch too much. <laughs> Hi, Kathy's daughter. How are you doing? <laughs> uh, Kathy, uh, Kathy uh, Butler, I agree, Sandy. You are fighting for everyone's right not to be wronged like this. Uh, Sela Keeper, if NCL shares take a dive, I'm selling my five shares. No questions asked. I'm getting out. I'm getting out. Richard, uh, you probably have to sign away your right to sue to accept compensation. Well, again, uh, you know, compensation is compensation. Um, you know, there should be compensation. Uh, I've read the, uh, about people who, who flew in from Ireland, from England, from Europe. Uh, their ticket, their airfare was 2000 bucks because they had to fly to Miami and then fly home from Los Angeles. So if you're a European and you want to book that kind of a flight deal, you're paying through the nose. Um, two grand in transport, a hotel in Miami the night before, probably a hotel in L.A. the night after or, 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 or so. Um, meals, uh, transportation, uh, and then onboard expenses like the taxes and fees. What were the taxes and fees? Sandy, do you remember what the taxes and fees were for you, for your cruise? Uh, port charges and all that stuff uh, from Miami to uh, Los Angeles. If you're still with us, I'd love to know that. Uh, I'm thinking it would have to have been a couple hundred bucks at least per person, wouldn't it? Uh, and then, and then of course, there's the tipping charges. Uh, so, you know, we're talking uh, thousands of dollars a passenger over and above the fare. Uh, this is this is not just a little, you know, a little one week cruise in the Caribbean for 650 bucks. No, 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 no. This was this was booked at a, as a dream cruise. Um, Richard says, uh, saying, what about the cost of long term medical problems? Right, exactly. Uh, Richard, you nailed it on the head right there. What about, uh, you know, if you're in England, you've got the national health, you've got the national, uh, the, 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 the national insurance. But if you're from the United States, <laughs> and you don't have a health plan, or if you do have a health plan, it may not cover this, you may not be covered. And now you're on your own. And what if these come into 1000s of dollars? What about that? Yeah, it's it, it is an absolute mess. Um, the other cruise lines, they've got to be paying attention to this. I mean, got to be. Uh, if they aren't, it's at their peril. At their peril if they aren't. Uh, yeah, this is a this is an unforgivable crime. Uh, just an absolute uh, the, the betrayal against the, the against the customer. Uh, Eight thousand of them, not not one thousand, not two thousand. Eight thousand at least. Unbelievable. Just terrible. Uh, yeah, not not good at all. Just terrible. Uh, let's see. Now we've got 38 thumbs ups. Thank you, everybody, for that today. That is a great number. I uh, really appreciate all the thumbs ups you've been giving us today. I really love it. Sandy is saying here, uh, $1,300 US in taxes, fees, service charges before sailing, not including the tips, et cetera, that were acquired uh, aboard uh, for two people. There you go. So $650 a person multiplied at 2,000 people. People, folks, we're talking a lot of money here plus transport. Uh, it, it's unthinkable money. And we got four cruises we're talking about. Uh, Sandy was on one uh, one cruise. There were four like that, that had the same. They were doing the work on four cruises consecutively. Unbelievable. Millions. It's millions of dollars. Just millions. And Norwegian is, is pulling a fast one on these people. Just mm, not good at all. Not good at all. Folks, I think I'm going to pack this up. I want to say, Sandy Nystrom, thank you so much for coming on my channel today. Uh, I really appreciate it. I've invited everyone and anyone from the Panama Canal Sun to come on to my show. I'm on tomorrow at 2 o'clock. You and all of you are welcome to come on to tomorrow's show. Uh, any and all information you can provide us, 
I would love to share with my viewers and the followers out there. This video uh, is going to be uh, watched uh, as a regular video on my channel going forward. Uh, I have over, uh, uh, I've had now over, over one and a half million minutes of watch time now passed on my channel uh, from 190 countries and territories around the world. So I really appreciate all of you who are following me. Um, Sandy was just saying that's per person. She's also saying uh, uh, 20, 2,600 US dollars for two people is what she's talking about, it's 1,300 each. Uh, Richard is saying, I'm glad I have no cruises booked right now. My friend is sailing from New York on the breakaway in two days, should be okay. Jim Thomas, bye all and good night. Paula Kay, thanks Bruce, bye and all, had a great show. SQ Park, see y'all later. I want to thank everybody for coming by. Um, and again, thank you all of you for sharing my videos out there. I really appreciate that. It just helps get the word out and uh, it's exposed the, the, the story to everybody. And uh, I want to wish all of you a pleasant evening tonight. Uh, sleep in tomorrow and rest if you're not working. And drop by tomorrow at 2 o'clock in the afternoon Eastern time for my Saturday show. I might even have some trivia. You never know. I might pull out some trivia. All the bets. Uh, and then next week, Monday to Friday, I'm on at five o'clock, Tuesdays, Thursdays. I have two shows, five and eight, all Eastern time. Love to have everybody come around. Tammy Ray, to have a great day. Tommy Eaton saying, just noticed uh, the stock went down two and a half, two point one percent on Norwegian. How about that? Sandy, thanks, Bruce. Appreciate it. Thank you, Sandy. Uh, it was great having you. It's just wonderful. Loves to travel. Thanks and good night. Uh, Sandy, sell, tell everybody on that Facebook page how much fun you had today and uh, let them know that they're all welcome. I'd uh, love to have them. Tom Eaton, good night all. See you all tomorrow afternoon. Uh, this is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce. Charles Jordan saying, uh, saying goodbye as well. Bruce of Traveling with Bruce saying thanks for joining me today for my 5 o'clock show, April the 6th, 2018. Have a great evening. We'll talk to you tomorrow, Saturday, April the 7th. Excuse me, Saturday, April 7th, 2 o'clock Eastern time. Let's have some fun. Uh, Debbie Boy, see you. I just saw you. Have a good one, everybody. We'll talk to you tomorrow, and take care for now.